Now, it was back in 1972 when conductors on Dublin buses began to be phased out. And for that, a new bus was introduced. The team Andrata has spent the last two years working on a pristine restoration of one of those Leyland Atlantean buses. John Wheatley from Specialised PSV Services in Drogheda is one of them. Good afternoon, John. Uh, good afternoon, Sean. Uh, now, yeah, I, as I understand it, you haven't even completed the work on this one yet. The, 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 uh, the exterior is done. Is oh, that the no, no the, the exterior, the exterior, yes. Oh, some, some more interior work still to, be, still to be complete. Right, OK. And th- that work itself, I mean, the, for instance, I'm looking at a picture of it now and, you know, you have the colours absolutely right. Was it so yeah. difficult to even source the correct paint colour? Oh, no, 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 the re- records and that, and, and there's a great, the great enthusiast club and the museum and all, and they have all, all codes, uh, the original codes from, from manufacturer. Right, OK, so you, you were able to get them. And oh, where, yes, yes. Uh, and wh- where did the bus come from originally, and what kind of state was it in? Oh, well, it, it, it was actually, it built in Inchicore. I worked there uh, as an apprentice. I started in 1966, and the production, the new rearranged model came on, came on the market in, in 1966. And uh, this was a later one, came out in 1972. So it, it, that, that's where it started life. I uh, came in in chassis form, the, 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 the running gear, and then it was built entirely by, by Irish, Irish craftsmen. Like, like the rest of them, and, yes. and the same premises, same premises. May I say that the Dublin trams and all were built in right from the, the end of the eighteen uh, hundreds. Right, uh, but but this particular bus you've been that you've been working on, where did that come from? Uh, well, oh, it, it, it's a, it's a CIA Dublin, uh, which became Dublin bus after nineteen eighty seven. So it, it worked in Dunningburg, Dunningburg garage, and the Greystones and Bray route for most of its life, fifteen years, and. And then went off to a driving school as well, but it was a, it was CIE CIE um, CIE operated. And right. Okay. So, what, what, but when you took possession of it to to, to uh, uh, start putting it back together again, it was still functioning as a bus, was it? Oh, uh, oh no, no. It was it was purchased it was purchased for restoration. Oh, back uh, oh nearly 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 twenty years ago. And a lot of volunteers. It's, it's a privately privately owned group um, enthusiast, may we say, and they they. Um, this this is a thing they 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 just like we're all we're all a little bit of uh, nutcases and the right. sure. <laughs> it yeah. keeps us busy. And and what have you had to do to get it to the condition it's in now? Well, well it, it had to be totally totally repanelled and 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 re 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 uh, stripped down basically all all the all the metalwork out uh, outside and the roof. It would have it would have had a hard life with with driving schools and all its working life with bangs on the front and the roof and all this. Uh, so it was entirely entirely panelled on the outside and then and then um, may I say that the actual gleaming paint work that you see that was uh, that was professionally done in in. In a spray boot and oven, oven baked uh, to the highest to the highest spec. So uh, I can't claim credit for that. Right. Okay. And and, and so these buses were different because, as I was said in the introduction, there they were the first ones that weren't going to have um, conductors oh, yes, on yes, them. Yes, that yes. was the plan, yes. anyway. The, the no, that, that, that was the plan. Yes. Oh well. The, well, the plan it actually started uh, years before that. They they the first models built. First model built had just the one door. It was uh, the ordinary. Uh, model and but then they then they uh, introduced the second door to bring in to bring in the uh, the one man bus and uh, oh I'd say the longest the longest negotiations in in trade union history I'd say fifteen <laughs> years it took to uh, to get the negotiations and agreement on it at, at that time so the the um, they didn't they didn't actually get the one man bus till nineteen eighty six eighty seven yeah uh, and they had to, to prepare for it and they built the models and all. Uh, back oh, 15 years before that, they started with the second the second door for the the exit, as we see today now on all Dublin buses. And yeah, and the, these buses, though, as I understand it, they originally didn't have windows that you could open. Uh, no, no, the first the first model, oh, uh, uh, a famous a famous designer, a famous engineer, which we won't name. He decided, well, uh, the Irish are better. They they don't they, they'll get over this. They don't need windows, and and they, they they'll um, they'll um, oh yeah, it'll be air air conditioning to. Uh, but it was only blow fans. There was no air conditioning. It was only fans and all. But it, it never worked. People were just roasted, and there was endless complaints <laughs> and the rover heating and going on fire. All sorts of things happened in the, in the early days, but. That was eliminated then, and uh, they got sliding windows like like 
the modern day ones and ever since that nobody attempted such a thing since right, yes now the, the bus that you uh, uh, as you have uh, the, in the condition it's in now of course there aren't any adverts on it are you, are you planning to uh, do that yes well you see that that would, that, that would be the actual condition the build condition as it left as it left as it left Inchicore Spire Road mm. in, in, in 1972 it came out and came out that, that exact livery and they they, they they didn't receive ads till a little bit later it it, they, it depended on on where they were working and there were different Different, different um, part of the city, and going to Donnybrook, it would be relevant to Bray or something like that, where shops or places like that might have a, they'd have they'd have their own advertising, and it'd be on it'd be on the area in the area, and it would be so occasionally an odd one, an odd one did get a, a an, an advertisement in a bank or something like that on on bills when it was actually made in the works. Ah, right, I see. And so, uh, there's, there's work still to be done on the interior of it. How long? Ah, is... there is. They're, 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 they're seizing and upgrading the seizing it. It's the blue, it's the blue vinyl and and uh, some floor, some floor work as well. Because yeah. it's, um, how long do you think that's going to take? Ah, uh, that'll uh, that, that'll take, that'll take another year or two because because there's an awful lot of work done by volunteers. It's like the um, I'd always an interest in it and a volunteer in the actual uh, National Museum in Transport Museum out in Holt, and that's where I had my. Uh, interest all along and uh, an awful lot of volunteers should depend on these things because it can be costly uh, to get it to get it done fully professional Absolutely. well I will how much I mean still it's a heap uh, a heap of work you've done oh uh, so yes, yes, how, yes right. where's the money for all this come from Oh, well, it, it, it's just private, by private, privately owned. It's from individuals and a, a, a group, a, a small group, and then the 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 um, you know they just they just it's among them it's among themselves basically. Uh, they it is a group, um, unlike the museum itself. It's 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 based on volunteers basically to do all the work to do a lot to do a lot of the work but then mm. the, the professional stuff is, is is sent out and the the skilled people involved sure yeah and so when when, when it's completed now is that do you think where it's going to end up in in Hoth at the transport museum um well, it, it, it might, it might. They, they have the early model with the with the, the actually one of the first models built in in '66. It's out there. It's it's on show. Not as not as good condition, may I add, because uh, just funding and that just isn't available to bring it up to that uh, specification. Yeah, the, are you working on any other projects? Oh, yeah, I have a number a number of classic ones. I own I own one myself then as well. Uh, back back from the thirties. The thirties, which came in before the war and wasn't actually built till after the war in 1947, and uh, I'm working at that at the moment. That that's my own. It, it, it's uh, it's it's built in the very same workshops and all in 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 Chicor. Right. So it has a great, uh, very sentimental. Yeah, I would imagine so. The, the in in Chicor nowadays, do, do they make anything anymore? Oh no no no! It didn't didn't uh, that close in 19, 1976, 77. Right, um, because it, it came in all all the uh, the imports and that. Although they started off with a famous famous uh, factory in 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 Shannon, they they moved down there. Uh, politi- a political stroke, I won't say anymore. But it went <laughs> down there, and they built these famous bombardiers and GAC. But of course, that that um, that just folded as well, and it never never um It, it worked for a number of years, all okay, but they. Um, it just did, it just didn't no export models or anything like that were ever ever really mm. produced. So they just it closed down and and so it, it's all it's all imports really since. Yeah, that. but the, well, I suppose when Inchicore closed down, there was a lot of you know skilled people. And oh, there, there indeed, there was, yeah, there was there was three yes up uh, upwards around three hundred. It was it finished up. We see a a Belgium company a Belgium company took over. It was sold off partly. But we were all under contracts that we we could go back. We'd have our job in in CIA when the if anything happened. So it it was um, it it lasted. The Belgian company stayed there for five years, and they brought out the tan ones. They the mustardy colour bus. Oh, nobody liked them. They were they were square. Uh, but they came out after after this model, and they were five 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 years in production, and and that was the uh, they 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 ceased operation. Yeah. So right, nothing there since apartments, there townhouses, since. and and. The usual development. Yeah, well, we look forward to seeing you uh, driving the bus uh, up to Hoth uh, when you when you complete your work. And thanks a million, John, for speaking Indeed. with okay, us today. Thanks a lot for my time. Bye bye. That was uh, John Wheelie there. He's a bus restorer at Specialised PSV Services. You are listening to the Moncrief Show.